Bonsoir, mes amis. Welcome back to Monaco. Last time, the mole led us out of the fraught uh, danger steady state of Monaco. This time, the hacker will help us remove the tracks. As compared to many of the other Finn missions, which are built around a certain character, or at least built around that character's origin mission, this one feels very fresh. And I think it's because it has this mechanic that isn't seen in any other mission except for the hacker's origin mission. You have to deal with all of these uh, pieces of gold that are embedded in the electrical structure. The only way to get them is with a virus. Because it only appears in two missions in the campaign, it it feels pretty nice. I, I really like it, and I wish it popped up in more areas. This entire area seems more intimidating than it is. There are only two lasers that are always on that you'd need a virus to get by them. But uh, everything else turns on and off, so it's very easy to get by. As compared to the last level, where the mole felt underutilized, or perhaps out of place, this level was particularly designed with the hacker in mind. There are so many security systems, and so many opportunities to get around them with viruses, that if you aren't using the hacker, you're going to be severely handicapped. Now that can be a challenge in and of itself, but, well, sometimes things get a little bit too challenging. When I was first playing through these missions, there were two levels that I was not able to clean out with no deaths on the first try. The first one was After the Fire, which is the first Monaco Finn mission, and the second one was this one, and it's because of one area in particular that we'll be getting to. I know I've been throwing out a lot of theories about what could be the truth oh, behind the well, well, so to speak. But... It really seems like everything's kind of coming together very coincidentally, doesn't it? Inspector Voltaire happened to be the only person who had the, uh... had access to all the interview footage, or he's the only person we know for a fact interviewed all the thieves. And the interview footage just conveniently disappeared. So, now, he's working with Constable Candide, and everything yes, Constable Candide would. is doing, you know... Mm. Inspector yeah, Voltaire seems matter. to be one step ahead, even as much as he is one step behind. Every place we've been going to, the thieves have already been, but somehow Inspector Voltaire knows where to go next. I don't know. If I was Constable Candide, I'd be asking some serious questions here. You may have noticed this safe in the lower left, near by the metal detectors. That is the main problem, or rather the main obstacle to get around in this level. But we'll have to get back to that because uh, we're going to take a detour into the underground HQ. As somebody who plays the lookout all the time, or at least prefers to play the lookout, Knowing where guards are at any given time is extremely powerful, especially if you're the type of person who, like me, tends to play more cautiously. So, when nobody's playing the lookout, you almost feel handicapped. You know, not that there's anything wrong with that, it makes you work a little bit harder, and it makes it so you can actually use more than one character, but... 
Even so, the hacker is uniquely suited for this level. Just being able to have an army of viruses to circumvent every security system and to work on all of these embedded gold and trophies is extremely useful. You'd be hurting yourself otherwise in this level not to use the hacker, but maybe that's a challenge. I have completed this level using other characters, so I can guarantee you it's possible, but if you're having trouble otherwise, you should definitely use the hacker. Excuse the little hiccup here, and don't worry, your computer isn't freaking out on you. My antivirus decided now is a good time to uh, give me an update, so... This room seems extremely intimidating, and it is, don't get me wrong. But something to keep in mind here is that none of these lasers are connected to alarms. We'll be seeing that more in depth later. It's around this point I realized I've grabbed a significant number of gold pieces, but I still don't have any items. My usual item being a wrench or a smoke bomb, I figure now's about the time to uh, remedy this. So, all of your areas here on the left and right, you will need a virus to get into them. You'll notice up on the upper left, there's this, uh, there's that hand panel door that leads to this ladder, but the only way to get through that hand panel door, obviously, is to use a virus. Getting behind the computer reception can give you some viruses if you need them desperately, and aside from that, still having that one virus, you'll be able to get in facility security. But this main lobby area can be intimidating. The best thing you'll have to learn to do is manipulate lines of sight by using all of these columns you see around. Once you have at least one virus to open the handprint door, the next one can turn off this laser that blocks off the ladder. And then you can get down here to use this other computer, because there's a laser blocking this one off as well, and that will let you through. The main trick is getting into that handprint door area. Now that we are equipped with some extra tools of the trade, let's head down and finish off the underground headquarters. As I mentioned before, none of the lasers here are connected to alarm panels, except for the upper left. In the uh, upper left, which is the monitoring room, is the only place you're going to find any of the floor panels or lasers actually connected to alarm panels. If where else, if you set something off, you're just going to take a bit of damage. Obviously, considering how many guards are on the monitoring room, it therefore behooves you to play a little bit more cautiously than you might otherwise, or at least have sure feet. Interesting note, where almost every entry into the control room is blocked off by a key door. The only exceptions are the areas at the very top. You have a handprint door on the upper left, and a pair of locked doors on the upper right. So, if you find yourself out of keys, those are going to be your only ingress points.
Except for this area on the bottom right. So, I'm a liar. Still, the key doors can be very useful if you find yourself trapped in here. They easily lead onto a ladder which can break your uh, pursuit, but the main problem is getting to this, uh... <laughs> and this is where I realize none of these are attached to alarms, is when I start getting shot by them. Uh, my main egress point is always to use that safe, and then just make my way over here to the handprint door and make my way out. It does require a little bit of lucky timing to get through there, but if you can manage to make it around the guards, the timing shouldn't be too much of an issue. As I mentioned before, what I consider to be the main snarl in this mission is the safe at the bottom of the area. You have to exit through the bottom either way to reach the escape vehicles. There's one car in the bottom right and one car in the bottom left, so you'd need to head out that way anyway. The main problem is that watching the safe are four different lasers, two of which are stationary and two of which are rotating. Now, if you're not using the hacker, it's going to be very difficult to get the number of viruses you need in order to circumvent the security system. Not impossible, mind you, just very difficult. The rotating lasers and the stationary lasers are attached to machine guns, which will push you off of the safe if you're trying to brute force it. And the ro and they're also attached to the security doors, which will come down and lock you out as soon as you hit them. This is actually where I also found out something else that was neat about the hacker. Much in the same way that viruses will go around and turn out lights for you of their own accord, they will also turn off alarm panels as well. You may notice these alarm panels are sort of flickering between blinking red and also being off. When they're blinking red, they're active. Anything attached to them will set off the alarm and bring all the guards to you. When they're off, they won't. So, I'll fully admit it, I got a little bit lucky there, but I'd rather be lucky than good. That's all for now. Please join me next time when Inspector Voltaire takes us on a road trip.